Hey everybody, Derek here from Bomb Socks with a new day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So I introduced you yesterday to Joseph F. Smith and I want to introduce you today to his family. First of all, check out the Smith family picture. Woo, I bet this was a this was a fun picture to take. So this is 1901. This is Joseph F. right in the middle right there. And he had six wives and 48 children. So, so he was part of that plural marriage doctrine. And uh, you can see right there some of these. Th what a crazy family picture this was. Now, this kid right here. Zoom in a little bit. I want to hang out with that kid. Look at him right there. So things don't change in family pictures over the last hundred some odd years. But anyway, that's Joseph F. Smith's family for you. Now let me show you what he understands with regards to family. So between 1869 and 1918, Joseph F. Smith buried 13 children, nine of whom were young, along with his one wife. You got six-day-old Sarah Ella. You got two-year-old Mercy Josephine. You have a picture of her right there. Eight-month-old Heber John. One-year-old Alfred Jason. One-year-old Rhoda Ann. I'll tell you more about her in a second. One-year-old Albert Jesse, two-year-old Robert, one-year-old John Schwartz, uh, four-year-old Ruth, 19-year-old Alice, 36-year-old Lenora, his wife, 64-year-old Sarah, passed away, 25-year-old Zina died, and then 46-year-old Hiram Max Smith, who was also an apostle, uh, died in, in January of 1918. So you can see that Joseph F. Smith understands the concept of loss with what he was able to experience. And some may say, well, he had so many children, that's kind of what happens. No, nah, I think there's a unique tutoring that took place here for Joseph F. And this little story about Rhoda Ann, look at this, this breaks your heart, but it shows you kind of where he's at. So this is the daughter of Joseph F. Smith and Sarah, uh, who was born on July 20th, 1878. She fell ill in late June of 1879. Joseph F. Re recorded in his diary, this morning, my little Rhoda was again taken suddenly very sick. I went to the president's office, and while in a meeting of the Brethren of the Twelve and the attorneys, a messenger brought me word that my little Rhoda was having convulsions. I hastened home, calling for H.J. Richards, who accompanied me and found the baby very sick. And although her temperature was only 102, only 102, I administered to her, and she seemed some better. Over the next two days, Joseph F. Smith noted the sleepless night and anxiety about his daughter. I began to feel alarmed about her. She is very sick, and my sympathy runs away with my faith. Still, I keep administering and exercising all the faith I can, and I believe she will recover. At least I claim that blessing at the hand of the Lord. I do not want to bury my children, keeping in mind he had already lost some children there. Rhoda Ann's condition suddenly became very grave on July 1st. She is in great pain, Joseph F. Smith recorded. Uh, during the night, he watched her every breath and move until 4 a.m. when Edna again relieved me. I had got a few hours of sleep. On July 3rd, he wrote, She was never so low before, nor have we ever had a child so low recover. Still, I will hope and pray. She is the most beautiful, intelligent, and attractive little child. And for nearly one year, she has been the loved pet of all the family. I Meaning they just, everybody adored her. I have often shrunk from the thought that we love the little darling too much, for our hearts are set upon her. And now I pray God to spare her to us. Well, on July 4th, the little child looked around and recognized us and breathed easier and coughed less. Her pulse also was lower and less rapid, so that on the whole, she is much better than yesterday. Oh, how our drooping hopes revive. Well, within a few hours of getting some rest, Joseph F. Smith noted, I had scarcely laid down when I was called as soon as possible. I dressed and entered into the sick room, and I found my precious beloved darling, beloved one, dying. I took her on the pillow, walked the floor with her. She again revived, but only lingered for an hour and died in my arms at 1.40 a.m. Now God only knows how deeply we mourn. This is the fifth death in my family, all my little ones most beloved. Oh God, help us bear this trial. The funeral was held on 7th of July. Oh, who can tell the aching sorrows of the heart torn and lacerated to the very core by cruel, merciless hand of death? Oh, how we loved that brightest, sweet, darling babe. I dare not trust my thoughts. My heart aches. 
Following the funeral, Joseph F. Smith vented his feelings and his yearnings. In the kind mercy of God, we still have eight children left out of 13, and yet we are lonesome and desolate, disconsolate without our God-given little darling Rhoda. Oh, why are they which are most beloved, who by nature nestle closest to the heart taken away? My reason has fled me, my philosophy is gone, and just now I cannot think of anything but grief. Yet I will not complain, nor murmur, nor attempt to express my sorrow, and will only repeat again, why, oh why, in the name of reason, can we not preserve the lives of our children? Keeping in mind, this is a time period where sickness was just ravaging the country. Well, another loss here, and again, not trying to be a downer here with this, but I do want to show you what he understands about loss. So here's Hiram Max Smith, his son Joseph, and Joseph F. Smith. So Hiram died at age 45 due to a ruptured appendix on January 23rd of 1918. His wife Sarah Ida Bowman would die later that year. So this is 1918, and she died of heart failure during childbirth. They left behind five children. So as I share that with you, what would you consider Joseph F. Smith to be an expert on? So, with all of that in mind, when we come back tomorrow, I'm going to share with you section 138, knowing what Joseph F. Smith has gone through, and to show you exactly how he is the perfect person to receive this revelation. So, anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thank you for sharing these messages. We appreciate that. Please go check out our amazing gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com, and you guys have a great day. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.